My name is John Higgins. I'm the Central Regional Sales Manager for Parker Lord. I've been in the adhesive business for over 25 years, and I've covered many different industries, including transportation, heavy duty truck, off highway equipment, general industrial, and electronic materials. And I'm joined today with our other presenter, Steve Webb. Thanks, John. My name is Steve Webb, one of the application engineers here at Parker Lord. I've got about 23 years of experience with Parker Lord, both as a chemist, business development, as technical service, and now one of the applications engineers. Let's take a look at what we'll cover today. We'll give you a brief overview of who we are, understanding the value of adhesives for trailer manufacturing, an introduction to Lord adhesive technologies. We'll review some of the trailer applications that you commonly see today, and then some of the new ones that we're working on. We'll review our seam sealers, and then go over our resources. Let's take a look at Parker Hannafin. Parker has over 3,000 product lines in 50 countries, and you can see we are a global business with local focus. We have over 290 manufacturing plants worldwide. Let's take a look at Parker Hannafin's technologies. I mentioned that Parker has over 3,000 product lines. You can find these products around everything that moves. You can see our multiple divisions. Parker Lord falls under sealing, shielding, and material science. Let's take a look at some of the Lord solutions. Parker Lord offers much more than just adhesives and sealants. We can help you with your product design. Sometimes we will recommend design modifications to accommodate the adhesives versus other joining methods. We can help with your process and fixturing designs, working with you to convert an old process to accommodate an adhesive. Our goal is to increase your throughput and reduce your overall cost. And then we can also help with your meter mix and dispensing equipment. Parker Lord does not manufacture equipment, but we have many allied partners that we've had a long associations with and can help you find the right source. Parker Lord has a long history and a lot of experience in the transportation industry. One of the main factors of our product success is superior environmental performance. Knowledge and resources to help you and over 40 years of experience and innovation helping many customers. Let's look at the main value of using structural adhesives for trailer assembly. Cost reduction, assembly times, design flexibility, and aesthetics. At this time, I would like to ask the audience a question and would appreciate your feedback. How are you building trailers today? I'll give you a minute. Thank you, I appreciate the feedback. So why replace or augment traditional assemblies with structural adhesives? Adhesives can reduce your cost. They cost less than welding based on labor rates and post-weld finishing cost. I'll give you an example of this. We worked with a small fire truck manufacturer. After they welded their doors, it took them over six hours to reduce the weld scars to get a nice clean finish before they went into the paint process. After bonding the doors, they were a little skeptical of the strength of the adhesive, but after putting them through impact testing and rugged testing, they learned that the adhesive would hold up just as well, if not better than the weld. And they didn't have any extra finishing to do. They put the doors right into the paint process. Rivets and hub fasteners uh, per foot of use are also more expensive than, than the adhesive. Adhesives seal and bond, eliminating or reducing sealing operations and costs. It's a one-step process where when you're riveting, you've got to put in a sealer in and then put the rivets in, causing extra labor time. Another reason we replace or augment traditional assemblies with structural adhesive is assembly time. We can decrease cycle time from riveting by eliminating manual operations multiple operators and sealing afterwards. 
particularly in roof applications. Continuous welds and interlocking floor extrusions can be replaced and reduced assembly time with adhesives. And bonded logistic strips and D-rings offer time savings in installation. We have done these multiple times with multiple companies and can help you as well. Why replace or augment traditional assemblies with structural adhesives? It offers design flexibility. Use composite sidewalls in lieu of sheet and post construction. Light weighting is a big trend in the industry and moving to advanced composite systems would require other fastening methods like structural adhesives. You could also bond translucent roofs like Chemlite or aluminum to upper extrusions and J-channels. Add E-Track and logistics strips to finished bodies wherever needed. And again, we have done this multiple times with our structural adhesives. Why replace or augment traditional assemblies with structural adhesives? Aesthetics. Graphics are easier and less time consuming to apply to a smooth sided trailer as compared to a riveted sidewall. Adhesives versus rivets. Rivets have been used in the industry for a long time. They are a good fastening method, but there are some downsides to them. Rivets tend to create a leak point. As the truck body or trailer ages, the rivets will rattle and come loose and you'll have potential leak points. There's no localized stress. Adhesives offer excellent weathering and a smooth, seamless design and there's no additional sealing required. And they also reduce the risk for material deformation and corrosion. And finally, in your manufacturing process, a lot of times rivets will not set the first time. So you will have to redo them after quality inspection. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Steve Webb. And I thank you for your time today. In this first slide, we'd like to talk about some of the top acrylic adhesives that we'd be using in the applications for trailer builds. And we'll discuss those applications a little bit later in the presentation. The first one is one of our workhorse products, Lord 400 series. It comes with a, in a variety of open times at performance levels, material bond of bare metal, paint, painted metals, plastic, et cetera. And this is kind of one of our go-to products for the assembly applications within the trailer market. The next product we will talk about is the Lord Max Lock. Again, a family of adhesives that has multiple open times bonding bare metal, painted metal, and plastics, but it does particularly well on galvanized and galvanil type substrates, as well as stainless steel. Better peel performance than the 400 series, and in particular, it has a higher heat resistance. So this is one of those products that can actually, actually withstand both e-coating temperatures and powder coating temperatures. The last product is Lord 606. That's a, an acrylic adhesive used as a cross bonder. So these types of applications, you can bond fiberglass to aluminum, composite plastic or a glass fill plastic to a metal or a painted metal. So it's really meant for those cross bonding applications where you're bringing multiple materials into the joint. Two other products I'd like to talk about on this next slide are two newer products that Parker Lord has launched. The first one is the 850 series. So it's a family of adhesives 850 and 852. Uh, do particularly well on stainless steel and galvanized, but also it's really designed to have a higher fatigue resistance than previous generations of structural adhesive. Has good tensile resistance and it acts as a good cross bonder. The last product I'd like to talk about is Lord 7610 DTM. This is a one component MS polymer based sealant. An excellent product for bonding bare metal, painted metal, composites, plastics, wood, rubber, etc. So it's a fine sealant, but it does have some unique characteristics. The material is paintable and sandable, but most importantly, it'll bond a, directly to a bare metal surface, unlike other products without a primer. And two, it's paintable immediately in its wet state. So it's a type of product that can be applied. We don't need to wait for it to skin over prior to going into a wet paint process. So now we're gonna be, begin talking about the trailer application, but first we'd like to launch our second poll question. And the question we have is, do you have trailer assembly quality concerns related to water leaks? And we'll give you guys a couple of minutes to answer that question and then we'll move on with the applications themselves. On this slide, I'd like to do a brief overview of some of the applications we'll talk about in subsequent slides. First one will be a roof bonding itself in conjunction with J channels. We'll also talk about the front radius assembly applications. 
sidewall and shiplap in particular with composite sidewall materials, E-Track and skylights, and the last one, bottom and top wall extrusions. On this slide, I'd like to talk about how we're gonna incorporate adhesives in a roof bonding application. So typically, either aluminum sheet or translucent fiberglass materials are placed down on the roof. Uh, a one component sealant or a urethane material is applied to the roof bows. And then around the perimeter, after the material is tensioned, there's holes punched through or drilled through and then followed up by rivets and then followed up further after that with one component sealants to prevent leaks. Where using adhesives would diverge would involve after the roof bows are, have a one component sealant adhering them down, the aluminum material or the translucent fiberglass material would still be tensioned on the front and rear. The J channels are laid down and the adhesive, in this case, a MaxLock 400 series or even potentially one of the 600 series families is then applied with the mixer underneath the roof material all the way around the perimeter. A second bead is laid right on top of the sheet itself and then the J channel is forced down into that. A number of clamps are run around the outside perimeter to compress the adhesive bead. And at this point, the adhesive bonding is completed. There's no need for an additional step of adding a sealant and the step in the time that's normally associated with punching the holes and performing the riveting operations is pretty much eliminated. This is one of those areas where using adhesives on a roof bonding leads to not only a time savings typically for the manufacturer, but also a cost savings. Not to mention those savings relative to worker injuries and repetitive motion injuries, as well as high decibel noise injuries. In this slide, we'd like to talk a little bit about adhesive trailer nose applications. The types of adhesives we'd be using on these are either the 400 series, the MaxLock, or the 850 series. Areas and applications where we can apply adhesives and replace mechanical fasteners and sealant and combinations thereof are the front nose quarter round, typically either aluminum or polished stainless steel. That stainless steel sheet that may enclose on the entire front end of the cap or the composite plates themselves, in which case they'll be shiplap bonded. We'll talk a little bit further about that application in the next slide. As well, bonding the upper and lower extrusion and the corner caps, whether they're a plastic or a casting, these are typically areas where we go through with the individual manufacturer and perform testing to make sure the adhesive is appropriate, but it's certainly an area where we can replace mechanical fastening the number of times we drill holes and then put holes into that dry freight fan itself and then further have to go back and seal it. In this slide I'd like to talk about and focus primarily on composite sidewalls and the adhesives that are used on them. We've worked with many manufacturers to provide solutions for these shiplap type applications. And these applications, rather than using a standard aluminum or painted steel on a Z-post type construction for the sidewall, these are using a composite sidewall there's many different manufacturers out there using different trade names, but they're essentially a, a pre-painted steel with a composite core, in most cases polypropylene or polyethylene plastic, and then another sheet of painted steel. The overlap you can see highlighted here is typically called a shiplap, and we apply adhesive typically in offline manufacturing area where the sidewalls are constructed before bringing them back into the main line. This allows for the adhesive to be utilized and for the adhesive to allow a small amount of time to cure and to gain sufficient strength. Two beads are typically applied. Each panel is, is sandwiched together and then subsequent panels are added to it until the final length of the wall is completed. Upper and lower extrusions are often can either be bonded or use a minimal number of rivets and or fasteners all in conjunction with those adhesives. If the customer isn't willing to change over to that just yet, then the traditional riveting uh, operations are certainly possible with the use of the adhesive. In this slide, I'd like to talk a little bit more about adhesives that might be used on a specific type of trailer, in this case, a reefer floor. Typically in those types of applications, there's an end customer requirement for a continuous seal to perform the action of sealing out road moisture and so forth, but also to keep water from leaking onto the road and also provide a continuous barrier for a refrigerated uh, trailer. Most often what we see are interlocking aluminum extrusions 
followed up by continuous welds, quite often manufactured with a gang welder running down the length of it. These types of applications are typically quite a bit of uh, time involved as well as uh, quite a bit of rework often involved as gang welders or multiple welding units running down a single bank of extrusions will often skip certain areas. So there's a quality inspection step and then a rework by an individual operator. These types of applications can be replaced in an interlocking extrusion design with an adhesive. 400 series 850 do a great job of replacing the welding in those interlocking designs. As well, they bond and continuously seal in one application. Typically as well, the manufacturer will realize a, a shorter manufacturing time for this subsection of the trailer. On this slide, we are gonna diverge a little bit and move away from the 53 foot commercial trailers to more of the cargo van bodies. The reason we wanted to, to discuss those briefly is because many of the same construction materials and methods that are used on the 53 foot trailers are also used on these shorter box type vans. So again, the same applications that I've previously highlighted, that roof bonding utilizing J channels and adhesive, various front radius and front cap applications. In these types of applications, you may see doors or enclosures either on the rear or on the sides of the vehicles as, as a supplementary option. The sidewall panels themselves, many manufacturers are moving to the composite sidewalls with the shiplap joint bonding. So these are readily able to be bonded using our adhesives as well that upper and lower extrusions. And then the last one, because there's often the reefer type vehicle where you're doing local delivery with a smaller type box fan, those same floor extrusions be they either for a refrigerated type vehicle or a standard commercial vehicle. If you're already offering to your customers a continuously welded floor, utilization of bonding is a much faster and lower cost method. Before we get into this next slide, I'd like to go ahead and launch our third and final poll question. The question we have is, are you interested in the improvement of the aesthetics with producing fasteners, rivets, and or welds and implementing adhesives? And we'll give you just a couple of minutes to respond to that question. On this slide, we'd like to move away from some of those box van type applications and 53 foot trailer applications we've talked about and move over towards the fifth wheel, and in this case, horse trailers. And the horse trailers themselves respond very well to the types of materials that are being used, primarily aluminum extrusions, and the adhesives we have to offer for this. Again, we'd be offering the 400 series, the Max Lock, and potentially the 850 for these applications. Much like the 53 foot trailers, the roofs are typically either a sheet stainless steel or sheet aluminum, we're riveted on the perimeter. These types of applications may or may not have a supplementary extrusion with them to lock the roof down. In those cases, we'd look at working with the manufacturer to design them, but there's certainly areas where we can use adhesives on that roof, in particular when there's a supplementary aluminum extrusion. The exterior sidewalls as well, quite often you see a stacked aluminum extrusion, easy to bond those very much like the reefer floors, they interlock. Slant dividers is one area where we've had quite a bit of success. The noise for the horses, again, these are a higher end type product, and the rattling that's typically associated with those slant dividers or stall dividers. You can calm the horses more if you have a quieter product that applies to the entire trailer, but certainly in close proximity to the animals. So those types of applications where we can use adhesive to reduce the noise in that area, is a good application to start with. And then you can see some of these other applications, the gooseneck floor area, again, where you might have a living area, it's a quieter application using adhesive, relatively easy to bond those down using the adhesives we spoke about, the nose, door additions into the sides of the vehicle, and then rear fold-out doors, etc. And here you can see on this slide, some of those actually adhesives in progress being used on the assembly of a fifth wheel type application. Again, an interlocking aluminum extrusion is being used on the sidewall. Uh, the customer is simply just going down applying the adhesive bringing the next section of aluminum into place, locking it down with a series of clamps, and they've now accomplished their build offline at the sidewall, and then are brought to the final assembly line and joined with the trailer. On this next section, we'd like to talk briefly about some seam sealers we might use in trailering applications. Parker Lord offers a number of seam sealers for the industrial and OEM markets. We'll highlight a few of them right here that can be applicable in the trailer market. 
You have 7555, that's a white aliphatic polyurethane. This is fast or medium or slow set. It's a very bright white, non-yellowing. It's paintable, it's sandable, and it can actually run in applications after an e-coat. It does run through a low paint bake cycle, so let's say a wet paint of 250 or below. We have two epoxies here. If you're looking to run your applications either through a powder coating operation and performing the seam sealer prior to that, or even an e-coating operation. For more rigid type assemblies, we have the 320, 323. We also have the 340 where it has more flexibility to the product itself. The last one is one we've spoken with uh, briefly in the earlier in the presentation. That's the 7610 DTM or direct to metal. It's a 1K polymer, MS polymer product. Uh, it does offer that skinning over, but interestingly enough, that it's paintable immediately with a wet paint process. This is a good overall general sealant on most of the different trailering applications. In this slide, we'd like to highlight some of the paint adhesion results on these large seam sealers, as that's a concern for most manufacturers prior to adopting a new product. We looked at the typical crosshatch adhesion using both the ASTM 3359 and also the ISO 2409 methodologies. If you're familiar with them, the ASTM, the best result is 5B, the worst being zero. And with the ISO results, zero is being the best and five the worst, so the opposite of it. The 7550, we ran it through performance using a couple of different primers over that surface. So that'd be the first coating that would be going over a seam sealer. In this case, we used an epoxy primer, an epoxy silane modified product, and an aliphatic polyurethane, all highest performance level possible. Same is true with the next two, their epoxies. In these, we also added in a couple of different powder coats, a TGIC polyester poly coat, an epoxy powder coat, and a polyurethane powder coat. And in all cases, both products, excellent performance, the best in class relative to both the ISO and the ASTM testing. And the last one, the 7610, we ran just the primers over the top of it. This is one class below the best. That's typical of an elastomeric sealant. In this case, the product has between four and 500% elongation. Quite frequently, it will elongate more than the coating that's bonded to it. So briefly, if you're considering using the Parker Lord products, we have a number of resources. I'd like to deal, detail those on the next slide. So just to highlight some of the resources that you have when you're considering becoming a Parker Lord customer, certainly to beginning with, you can call into the customer support hotline. They can offer tech, answer technical questions and engineering questions refer you over to the local highly skilled regional sales manager. The regional sales manager in support with the distributors can offer things like testing of your substrate, working with you on the engineering and design side, as well as getting trials and samples set up. 